everyone, it's Lady Pops, and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So, to draw this gremlin, I used Hobbycraft graphite pencils, a rubber, a sharpener, which I also got from Hobbycraft, some De La Roni Aquafine watercolour paper, and I also used Derwent Academy watercolour pencils. Now, the reason that I'm drawing a gremlin isn't just for pure fun, but actually, Colossal Crate has asked me to do their artwork again. And if you go to Colossal Crate's Twitter, you can see that my banner is now being used. Plus my little gremlin is being used as its own little ad to advertise the 80s Colossal Crate which is coming out next month I believe I know it's available to order now. And I was actually super excited to make this because Gremlins is one of my favourite films from the 80s. I have a Mogwai toy and I just love the movie. I think it's fantastic and you know what? I kind of even like the second one, the one where they sing. I think it's hilarious even though it's kind of cheesy but yeah, I, I love it. So when I draw anything, I always start off with the facial features, that includes the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And then eventually I move on to outlines, such as the ears, the hands, the body, everything else. And after I've got the basic shape, I always add just a little bit of detail. So fingernails, mouth, nose holes, the little glint in the eye, all bits like that, but not too much shading because I always go in with other things to do that because I'm not very good at doing shading with graphite pencils. So once I had my basic outline down, I then went in with the watercolour pencils and I'm using the Academy watercolour pencils. The first colour that I used for the ears, mouth and skin, so fingers as well and eyelids, was the Duent Academy watercolour orange and I did that very, very, very lightly just as a base colour. Then I took my brush and a little bit of water and started to blend all that in together. I tried to keep the darker areas which I knew which would be quite shadowed and darker, I tried to keep that quite thick whereas for the lighter areas I would add a lot more water and try and blend it out and, and push the watercolour ink, if this makes sense, away from it and into the darker areas that needed to be darker. I then went in with a candominium yellow and I just did this um, in certain areas just to add a little bit of highlight. I know it's a really weird way to do it but I'm not a professional artist or anything at all I don't think and I just kind of make it up as I go along really. So I put in these yellow patches to make it look like his ears were see-through if that makes sense so I want it to seem like the light was shining through his ears. I then blended that in with water again and then followed by adding shadows with a brown colour pencil. I don't necessarily like using black, I just think it's too much for shadows. So a few browns here and there work really well I think. And don't worry if you add too much, you can always use a little bit of water to blend it out. But when working with watercolours you really want to try to add layers very lightly and over the top of each other. You don't really want to kind of draw very hard and add a lot of pencil if that makes sense. You want to kind of add just a little bit at a time and try and build up the colour. And as you can see on the left ear I kind of did it wrong myself. I added way too much but then I ended up blending it out anyway so it kind of worked okay but I would definitely try and build up colour if I was you because it worked a lot easier that way and then started adding shadows with the browns and trying to blend that out as well as you can see I tried to follow the picture so I'm trying to follow a picture as much as possible I actually use several pictures and combine them together to create this picture under the ear I used several different shades of brown a little bit of grey not black in the fingernails and under the ear just to add a little bit more texture and then I went in under the ears with some red to add some veins. Now I did this a little bit too hard I think in my opinion, I think I should have built this up but again art is just trial and error and I know for next time. <laughs> now I know personally when doing fur I am really not good at fur but I think my fur actually turned out okay this time. So to create the fur the way that I did, I used the pencil strokes in the direction that the fur would face that makes any sense and then with a brush I also brushed away with water in the direction the fur would go I think that works a lot better than just kind of scrubbing it all together because it will start turning into a very meshy kind of color it will just like blend together whereas I think if you brush away in the direction you want the fur to go it just looks generally better so as you can see I went in with a very light kind of brown for the base color then I went in with a darker brown to add highlights and shadows I pushed down harder on the pencil the darker I wanted the areas to be however I would recommend just building up the color I think at this point I realized that I drew on the eyes and some of the head textures with the graphite pencil too hard it was too much there was too much there so I just ended up rubbing that out and then later on I used the lines that were still there as my guidelines because I didn't want these big black graphite pencil lines I obviously wanted to be more subtle next I moved on to drawing the white fur now the white fur was done by using a white pencil and a grey pencil and then alterating the colours between to make it look a lot more like fur. I did the two colours to make it look more textured and actually like fur rather than just a blank white kind of canvas if you know what I mean. I added more grey in areas that needed to be more dark and more shadowed and a lot more white in areas which were highlights. I went over the white with some brown flecks around the edges of where the brown needed to be because I needed the brown fur to stick up over the top of the white as you can see. 
Next I moved on to the eyes and the eyelids. Now the eyes are really cute and adorable to do. So firstly I did the eyelids and I did that in the same kind of tones and colours that I did for the ears and the skin. Adding darker areas around the tops and the bottoms, keeping the upper eyelid areas a lot lighter. This is to make it look a lot more 3D. Then I added a light kind of brown in the eyes just as a base colour. And I pressed quite firmly when doing this because I wanted the eyes to look more thick if you know what I mean. So I, the fur I wanted to keep quite light and airy, the ears and skin as well, but the eyes I wanted to be quite thick and dark and wet, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I pressed quite deeply in with the pencils for that. Then I went in with a black for the pupils as well, leaving just a tiny little circle of white for the reflection of the eye, which just makes any character look so cute. Then I went in and drew the other eyelid, just like the other one, but maybe just a little bit darker because I feel like when it's against white it looks a lot more prominent than it does when it's in brown, as you can see. Personally I think I added a bit too much, so as you can see I added a bit more white pencil into it to just soften the red because it was a bit too much I think. I think that decision was just wrong. <laughs> and then lastly I went in with a couple of darker pencils and Hello everyone, it's Lady Pops and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So to draw this gremlin I used hobby Hello everyone, it's Lady Pops and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So to draw this gremlin I used hobby Hello everyone, it's Lady Pops and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So to draw this gremlin I used hobby Hello everyone, it's Lady Pops and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So to draw this gremlin I used Hobbycraft graphite pencils, a rubber, a sharpener which I also got from Hobbycraft, some De La Roni Aquafine watercolour paper and I also used Derwin Academy watercolour pencils. Now the reason that I'm drawing a gremlin isn't just for pure fun but actually Colossal Crate has asked me to do their artwork again and if you go to Colossal Crate Hello everyone, it's Lady Pops and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own little adorable gremlin. So to draw this gremlin I used Hobbycraft graphite pencils, a rubber, a sharpener which I also got from Hobbycraft, some De La Roni Aquafine watercolour paper and I also used Derwent Academy watercolour pencils. Now the reason that I'm drawing a gremlin isn't just for pure fun but actually Colossal Crate has asked me to do their artwork again and if you go to Colossal Crate's Twitter you can see that my banner is now being used. Plus my little gremlin is being used as its own little ad to advertise the 80s Colossal Crate which is coming out next month I believe. I know it's available to order now. And I was actually super excited to make this because Gremlins is one of my favourite films from the 80s. I have a Mogwai toy and I just love the movie. I think it's fantastic and you know what? I kind of even like the second one, the one where they sing. I think it's hilarious even though it's kind of cheesy but yeah, I, I love it. So when I draw anything I always start off with the facial features, that includes the eyes, the nose, the mouth and then eventually I move on to outlines such as the ears, the hands, the body, the everything else and after I've got the basic shape I always add just a little bit of detail so fingernails, mouth, nose holes, the little glint in the eye, all bits like that but not too much shading because I always go in with other things to do that because I'm not very good at doing shading with graphite pencils. So once I had my basic outline down I then went in with the watercolour pencils and I'm using the Academy watercolour pencils. The first colour that I used for the ears, mouth and skin so fingers as well and eyelids was the Dewent Academy watercolour orange and I did that very 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 lightly just as a base colour. Then I took my brush and a little bit of water and started to blend all that in together. I tried to keep the darker areas which I knew which would be quite shadowed and darker, I tried to keep that quite thick whereas for the lighter areas I would add a lot more water and try and blend it out and, and push the watercolour ink if this makes sense away from it and into the darker areas that needed to be darker. I then went in with a candominium yellow and I just did this um, in certain areas just to add a little bit of highlight. I know it's a really weird way to do it but I'm not a professional artist or anything at all I don't think and I just kind of make it up as I go along really. So I put in these yellow patches to make it look 